Uh, so I'll call today's meeting to order. Today is September 17, 2020, 8 a.m. Uh, item two on the agenda, public in, uh, participation. Kathy, do we have anyone or? Nobody that I know of. Anyone, anyone know anyone? We have access to that. Yeah, no, I didn't get any emails. And I see no one else online. Uh, yeah. Moving on to item three, board minutes, uh, approval the August 20th, 2020 uh, regular board meeting. Um, can I get a motion to approve, Dan Sherman? So moved. Can I get a second, Sherry? Uh, Sherry. Second? second. Yep, second. Uh, discussion, uh, Dan Sherman, anything? Nope. Sherry, anything? No. Nope. Uh, Joe, anything? Joe, you're still on mute. I'm assuming Joe has nothing. <laughs> ah, there Joe. he is. Uh, Emmy? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah. Oh, all right. Uh, no, no, I have nothing. Sorry. Okay. Uh, we have a motion to approve. The uh, uh, vote to approve. Dan Sherman? Yes. Sherry? Yes. Joe? Yes. Kevin is a yes. Item four, cash books for July 2020. Um, can I get a motion to approve? So moved. Second, Cherry? Second, Cherry. Uh, discussion on cash books. Dennis, you're on mute. Um, Dan Sherman, discussion. No, I'm good. Hello? Hi, De hi, Dennis. Yes. We you hear you. Me? We can hear you now. Okie doke. Um, all right. We're on cash books. Uh, Dan Sherman's all set. Sherry, anything on cash books? Uh, nothing on cash books. Joe, anything on cash books? No, sir. Dennis? Nope. Kathy, anything? Nothing. Uh, all in favor, Dan Sherman? Yes. Sherry? Yes. Joe? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Uh, moving on to item five, monthly budget, August 2020. Uh, there's no vote here, but I will go around the table for any comments. Dan Sherman? I guess I'm just curious, um, Kathy, are, are we still lined up well in terms of our budget? I mean, nothing's, I mean, we got this COVID-19 business, but it really hasn't affected our budget at all, has it? No, it, it hasn't. If anything, it, the but it's we're better off uh, okay. with COVID because our postage has gone down, supplies have gone down because I'm not in the office, so we're a little we're under budget. Okay, very good. Thank you. Sorry. I'm all set. All set. Joe, anything yep. on budget? No, sir. Dennis, anything on budget? I got nothing. I am all set. Uh, moving on to item six, um, election for a second member. Uh, item A is to, to set the uh, schedule for the election. Um, there is something in the packet, um, a, a schedule for that. Um, If I can get a vote to approve it, and then we will discuss it, if we uh, want to amend totally it. So, Dan Sherman, can I get a motion to approve? Um, yeah, sure. Yes. Okay. Is this, can I get a second, Sherry? Yes, second, Sherry. Okay. Uh, so we have a motion to approve and second to set the schedule. Uh, Dan Sherman, do you have any discussion on the schedule that's been presented? Um, I'm just curious. Um, who is the uh, the second member? Is it is Sherry Dennis? Dennis. It's Dennis. Dennis is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh yeah, I know. Um, no, I'm. I, it seems like it makes a lot of sense. I'm good with it. All right, Sherry. Any any questions or comments on the schedule? Just uh, maybe not the schedule. Just kind of curious. Are we going to have an um, an incumbent election, or are we? Um, Dennis, um, <laughs> do you want to answer that? <laughs> I, 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 I'm just sitting back, just saying, 
I just want to sit back and see how much of this I didn't have a say in. <laughs> um, <laughs> we can talk later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I didn't anticipate uh, oh, walking. Oh, good. So, oh, nice, nice to hear. That is great to hear. I, guess. I mean, I think I was, you know, I thought it was once every six months meeting, but that's okay. That's, that's all right. No, these aren't bad. Yeah, no, I'll, uh, well, I'll continue to help out. Oh, excellent. Nice to hear. Sherry, you all set? I am, thank you. Uh, Joe, anything on schedule for this, the election? Joe? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Dennis, you all set? All set. Okay. Uh, we have a motion to approve. Dan Sherman. I have Aye. a comment first. Oh, I'm sorry, Kathy. Um, I'd like to do this election totally by mail due to COVID and not knowing what's going to happen in January. So normally what happens is we have retirees are done by mailing. That's by statute. That's what happens. Mm -hmm. And then we have the option of either doing the active members by mail or a physical election where they come into the office and do a vote. Yeah. Due to COVID, I would love to have just the whole thing done by mail this time. I, I totally agree. I'm in favor of that. I'm fine so, with that. So where on the, on the date of election, January 14th, do we have to have in the instructions something that says um, that the has to be postmarked by the 14th or has to be arrived by the 14th? Yeah. How do you want to do that? Yes. What I'll I, do is I will write up something whenever then sent out saying that all ballots must be must arrive in the office by that January 14th. Day. Really? I, I I would think they need to be postmarked by the 14th, but well postmarked, doesn't that mean we could get them on the 15th or 16th as long as they're postmarked by the 14th? I'm mm -hmm. really not familiar with the mail system. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. So but, you want yeah. it to be postmarked by the 14th. I would I would think, That's what yes. I would do. And yeah. when do we count then? The the twenty. Well, you could the twentieth. You could count them. So have them postmarked by the fourteenth, and then counted on the twentieth. Yeah. Let me just when, look. It's a I question. Could, I don't know. Yeah. No. We're just. Yeah. We're just looking. I mean that that would give the six days for the post office to do their thing. The right. way we've always done the retiree side of it because they've always been by mail, is they had to arrive in the office by the election date. Yeah, but now, that's when the best- they physically came yeah. by mail or whether they were hand-delivered. Hand-delivered, right, yeah. yeah. But no, well, yeah, yeah. In, the, in those days, we didn't have the issues with the post office like we do today. Right. Right. I mean, I can go either way. Um, as long as we're very consistent in telling people when they have to mail it in, or when it has to arrive. All right. Yeah, well, absolutely. Uh, I will so put whatever we decide in the instructions. Yes, but my question is, um, Dennis's term is is up um, the fifteenth or yeah. on the fifteenth. So what? Uh, what do we go without somebody? Uh, for or, yeah. So for four days. We can adjust this also. We have the room that we can make it a week earlier if you want to do that. I think so, yeah. I yeah. Mean, it doesn't have to be this particular date. Or, or we can leave it as uh, it has to, or we could do like we've done with the retirees and just say we have, it has to be in by the 14th. I mean, I could go either way. Yeah, so if Dennis's term ends on the 15th. Our, our January meeting won't be till the 21st, so it doesn't really matter that there's five days that in between. Unless we have a retirement emergency. Oh, come on. <laughs> well, you guys pick one. And that might, that point might be mute and mood anyways because that that's only if there's an election oh yeah absolutely 
Absolutely. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. if someone's going to run against Dennis. Right. Yeah. And I, know, Dennis, I mean, Kathy, oh. could we say that? Could we say that they need to be um, like postmarked by like the week before, like the eighth or whatever, and then that way? Yeah, absolutely. Then that way on like the fourteenth, then we can count them. Yes, we can absolutely do that. I don't know if that's something that you guys think yeah, is I'm okay. Yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine with let's, that. Yeah, let's go with that. You make that postmarked by on the eighth. Well, smacked on the 8th. Yeah, so we keep the, the election the same as the 14th, you know, um, count them on the 14th. Count on the 14th. Yeah. So I think we, okay. we need to amend that, Chair. I'm sorry, yes. Yes. You also with everything with with that one change, yeah. Um, um, and yeah. Sherry, you make the motion to include that change. Yes, I make that motion. Then okay. you second that. Sure. Uh, discussion on the amended. No discussion. Uh, uh, all in favor of the amended amendment, Dan Sherman. Aye. Sherry. Yes. Joe. Aye. Uh, Dennis. Aye. Uh, and now with regards to the overall schedule, uh, all in favor, Dan Sherman? Aye. Sherry? Aye. Joe? Aye. Aye. Dennis? Aye. Uh, I am all set. Uh, item 6B, assignment of election offices. Uh, Kathy? Um, what do you have on this? Will, will this be the same as usual, you and Cherry, or can Did Cherry just be? Go mute? What's the matter? <laughs> Kathy, oh. you okay? Can you hear? Kathy? <laughs> uh -oh. It looks like you're not muted. It looks like everything is okay. Kathy? Kathy, we lost the. I I did not hear a word you guys said. All, all of a sudden, my my good I thing. So it, good thing. Good <laughs> a little worried there for a second. Yeah. Uh, Kathy, on the ass <laughs> yes. something. Yes. Oh, uh, <laughs> the the assignment of the election offices would it be you and Cherry or can Cherry serve where she's a board member still? Anybody can say Anybody, but any, yeah, yeah, any board anybody member can, can do it, yeah. Okay, so will this be a, as in the past, it'll be you and uh, Sherry as the election offices? I would be glad to do it, sure. Yeah, that's fine. That good? Um, I'll make and that lunch, motion. And, and yeah, lunch we'll and everything, just everything in the past that we had also. Everything, yep. Everything is like lunch and supper and all of that. Great, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, if yeah. we're not physically sitting there, <laughs> we can we can have delivery to the house. I mean, come <laughs> on. <laughs> uh, Dan made the motion. I will second that uh, discussion. Any discussion, Dan? All set. No. Jerry, all set. All set. Joe, all set. Yes, sir. Dennis, all set. <laughs> all set. All in favor, Dan Sherman? Aye. Sherry? Yes. Uh, Joe? Yes. Dennis? Yes. I am I. Uh, item seven, appointment of the fifth member. Dan Sherman is the fifth member. Uh, Kathy, has this been advertised or do we need to advertise? How do we? We need to advertise. We need to advertise. Yes. Okay. And we need to accept uh, people's resumes. Okay. And we need to assume in that Dan and whoever else wants to apply, we need to hold interviews. Okay. And we, we did this last time also, didn't we? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll do this similar as last time that uh, you'll do the same procedure? Yes. 
Okay. Uh, is there a schedule for that? No. Okay. I'm looking to get it into the paper within the next couple of weeks, give applicants a couple of weeks to uh, supply their resume, and then hopefully we can have it for maybe the November meeting. Or October, no, we'll, I don't think October is quick enough. Okay, November. Yeah, when do I? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm fine with that. Uh, item seven, we don't need to vote on, do we? That's. You could vote to place it in the paper. I yeah, think. vote to advertise, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll open uh, that up for a motion. I'll move. I'll motion. Oh, okay. Dan, move it. I'll second it. Discussion. Dan Sherman. No. Um, Sherry. No. Joe. No. Uh, Dennis. Nope. Um. I, I had one thing, um, Sherry, Sherry asked Dennis, I'll, I'll ask Dan, um, I, I hope you're sticking around. <laughs> no promises. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't be like that. Uh, all in favor, Dan Sherman. Aye. Sherry. Yes. Joe. Yes. Dennis. Yes. <laughs> Dennis, oh, you're so an aye. Uh, yes. I am, I. I am a yes. So, <laughs> so to follow up, Kevin. So, I have a, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, I believe I'm the, the senior member in terms of the uh, this board. That's correct. Um, I know Kathy was on before me, but I'm curious how many years have I been on this? Does anybody know? Kathy would. Oh. Yeah, I, I don't know. I have and to you? go back. I'd have to go back and dig. If you had to say, what? All right, what you were I, not on in 94, that I know, but you yeah. were on, I believe, in 97. So Kevin, I. What, Kevin, when, when did Kevin start? Kevin, Kevin when did was you start? 2000? 2002. 2002. Yeah, because it was um, Convoy was the account before yeah. him, and, and I, was, I had probably four or five years with Convoy. How is Convoy? Uh, next item. No comment. <laughs> uh, all right, moving on to item eight. Uh, review of the supplemental regulations. In the packet, there were uh, supplemental regulations uh, for review. Um, and I will open that up to the board. Dan Sherman, you have anything on uh, supplemental regulations? No, I'm good. Sherry. Yes. Um, just looking at um, <clears throat> so all permanent employees who are employed on a regular work week, not less than 30 hours, are members of our system. So um, there are some employees that are less than 30 hours that have um kathy is is that right are there less than um employees are, with less than 30 hours there are some um only because they initially had a position where they were allowed into the mem into the uh, the um membership of the board and what happened is they have since dropped their hours. Like we have a couple of people who used to be full time. Now they only work nine or 10 hours a week. They're still in our system because we cannot get rid of them. Right. So they've dropped below the criteria. Okay. Their time is prorated. So we do. We have people who are less than 30. Okay. And they're, and they're grandfathered in and going forward, we don't. Right. They're, we can never get rid of some right once in a yeah so once a member once always a, always a yeah. member mm -hmm. so they are still in our system okay what about some of the um i, I don't want to single out but um like school yeah we do have some school people that that falls under when you say it falls under that that they're allowed into the system or that they're in the they, system and they're and their time has decreased yes. below 30. 
correct? So, so they, they were allowed into the system. Yep. Time has decreased below 30, but they're still in the system. Right. Once a member, always a member. Yes. Correct. But we, we don't allow new members in less than 30. Correct. Um, what about paras? Paras work 31.25 hours a week. So right now they're allowed in the system. How do other boards handle paras? Unfortunately, they're in the system. Other boards. Um, I thought that there were some boards that had them go, um, made teachers take them, teachers retirement. No, Arlington tried years ago, or Brookline, I can't remember, was it Arlington? One of the systems tried years ago to get required teachers to take certified aids, and apparently that went nowhere. So they've been unsuccessful because in the long run, these people come in, they um, end up going to, they work a year under the local board, end up transferring to teachers. And because of the 3HC rules, we own them at their teachers when they retire salary. For instance, here at 16, 17,000, they work a year, they go to teachers, they end up retiring at 80, 90, who knows what's gonna happen in 30 years, this, their salary. We have no way to appeal that under the 3HC rules. So we can't, we can't do anything about paras? The only thing you could do about a para is you can rewrite the wording on the membership to and we just rewarded we just rewarded the language last year for for uh, the traffic supervisors. Yeah. Right. Okay. So what 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 could that wording? For instance, Reading <clears throat> has their regulations that says that um, the employees. Oh, let me grab Reading's exact wording if I have it. All right, they, Reading says that um, anyone employed by the town of Reading uh, whose total service for their primary position equals or exceeds 1,690 scheduled hours per year shall be enrolled in the retirement system. So you could do it that way. <clears throat> I like that. And you can set, keep the 30 hours. Right. And then 30 hours is 1560, 1,560 per year. Okay. Say, you know, the exact same thing or a similar thing that you yeah. must work 1,560 hours, scheduled hours per year to belong to the Wakefield retirement system. Well, wait a second, though. The, and in the Reddings case, then somebody would go a full year before they'd be admitted into the system, correct? No, they're admitted right away. So, for instance, if I start a job today and I'm scheduled for 30 hours per week, you're started immediately on that first day. But it has to be, you know how I give you the letters? Yeah, no. No, but uh, as let me, long let me as they're scheduled for that. They allow them in. Okay, so let's. Just, so if you're going to have a rule that says you have to have, I'm just going to round it off to 1,500 hours mm -hmm. in the year. But if somebody starts out at, say, 31 for a number of months, and then doesn't work for quite a while, thinking about these paras, um, they wouldn't end up with 1,500. So what do you? Do you have to refund their money? What What do you mean then? I I'm, don't understand the question. Well, I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how the 15, this, this proposed 1500 hour would rule would work in practical sense. If you'd have to take the person's hire letter, take the number of hours that they work per week, multiply it by 52 weeks, 
or the number of hours that they work, uh, hours, the number of weeks they work per year. If it equals that 1500, you allow them into the system. Same way we do now, but we do it on a weekly basis with 30 hours. So, so, all right, so what does the 1500 accomplish if we, if we decide to put something in there? Well, it would eliminate paras. How? Because paras are our school year employees. So instead of uh, multiplying by instead of multiplying by fifty two up front, you're multiplying by you know, thirty or whatever, thirty five. Right. Well, the paras, if I if I remember correctly, they work one hundred and eighty or one hundred and eighty three days. Okay. So. Oh. Hold on, I'm gonna do the math. So just over a thousand. Time, oh, so you did it in your head. Wow, he is an actuary. Yeah, 11.25. Yeah, yeah, no, way, way short of 15. Yeah. So, so right up front in the, in the letter to these people that they would be told that because you're not gonna, you're not scheduled to get at least 1500 hours, you're not in the system. Correct. Okay, I get it. All right. Correct. And anybody that's already in the system, obviously, right, Kathy, they, right. they're cannot, grandfathered in. Right. If they're already in the system, they're in the system. We can't eliminate them. I, I like that. The only way we can eliminate them is if they leave their position. Right, exactly. And uh, essentially, many, most of the powers, they, they do. We're transferring them out constantly to the teachers. All the time. And I yeah no recourse. I can't mm -hmm. anymore. Right. Uh, Lomenzo put a stop to that or yes. slash John, whoever it was. Yes. I used to appeal every single para that came through. Yeah. Um, and we end up owing teachers uh, quite a bit of money. Mm -hmm. Oh, I remember that. To win the yeah. appeals. Yes. But now I don't win anymore because I right. can't appeal them. So, so let me suggest this then. I mean, um, Sherry, um, maybe for our next meeting, we have some language. Um, with an amendment to this, uh, the, the uh, first section of the supplemental regulations that we can vote on the next meeting? Um, yeah, or, or if Kathy has wording now, we can vote on wording now. We want to run this by SACO first or? Uh, I mean, if Reading has already got it, um, it's already been approved by Parax, so I, mean, I suppose right. we could just we could just copy the writing language. Yeah, uh, I'm good with that. Yeah, I can absolutely do that. Now, writing has a higher number of hours because they don't allow people in less than 32 and a half. Right, and we're 30, right? And we're 30, so we, would, <clears throat> right. we could copy um, Reading supplemental reg on that, but insert our 1560. Versus mm -hmm. their 1690. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah, <coughs> I'm good for that. 1560, 1560, 1560. Right, and that's 30 times 52. Kathy, quick question. Sure. Um, so, so the paras, new paras would not be able to come into our system. Correct. Major a lot of paras go on to become teachers mm -hmm. and go into mass teachers. Correct. Are they able to buy back their para, para time once they go into mass teachers? They are, yes. Okay, so so it, it isn't like that the, we're denying. <laughs> denying them their time if they go on. Correct. They, they eventually get it, okay. Okay. Well, we also have to do the, um, what is it, 7% OBRA contribution, right? Because if you're not in a retirement system and you're not in Social Security, you have to do the OBRA. Right. That would be the employee doing it, though. Right. I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm good with that. Uh, how many parents do we have, Kathy? Or... In the system now? I'm taking a wild stab, but I'm going to say around 15. Okay. Oh, I would have thought more than that, but yeah. We may have more. <laughs> I, I'm really not positive. Okay. 
Yeah, may, maybe we do have more because we have a lot of school people. Yeah, yeah, that's why I was saying I thought we would have more, but. Uh, but we have like the clerical and, and you yeah. know, the traffic mm -hmm. supervisors and all those and custodians. All right. System. No, I bet you we do have more paras than that. I think we do, but yeah. Yeah, I we know. do. Mm -hmm. Because we have approximately 100 school employees mm -hmm. out of five systems, five unions. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, I'm good with that. Yeah. So I'll I'll make the motion that we amend our membership regulation to include the um, language as Reading has it with a substitution of 1560 hours versus what they have. Great. Um, I will second that. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Discussion. Dan, any more discussion? Nope. Sherry, any more discussion? Nothing for me. Joe, anything? You're muted. Oh, poor Joe. Yeah, he was having some background noise. Oh, where'd he go? Joe? Joe, you there? Going by Joe. Dennis, anything on uh, this item? Any nope. discussion? You're all set? Nope. All set. Uh, Joe, any discussion? Joe? Joe, you there? It looks like he's um, not muted now. He's not muted. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know my phone keeps. It keeps automatically going to mute for some reason. Yep. <laughs> uh, Joe, any discussion on this item? No, sir. All set. Uh, so all in favor, Dan Sherman. Aye. Sherry. Aye. Joe. Aye. Dennis. Hi. And I am a yes. Uh, Sherry, anything further on supplemental regs? No, they look good. They look good. Uh, Joe, anything? No, sir. Uh, Dennis, anything? Nope. I am all set. Kathy, we're all set with that? All set. All set. Uh, we'll be going to item nine. Uh, January 1st, 2020, valuation. Um, I'm on a Zoom call. Stop. That this is for discussion. Dan Sherman. Yeah, so um, obviously if I've taken a closer look at all the uh, materials um, that we have in our packet here. Um, the PARAC wants to decrease or is recommending decreases in the investment return assumption. You'll see at the top of the first page, exhibit one, a change from seven and a half down to seven and a quarter. Um, we do now have a $14,000 COLA base, so that's the other change. Uh, but uh, we've exceeded 9% um, return in our last 35 years. Um, our return last year was like 18%, and our, you know, a 10 year average exceeds uh, seven and a half percent. So I went back to Parak and said, hey guys, you know, um, I understand you wanna be really conservative. Um, we've beaten all these assumptions. You know, why do you keep moving it down? But I also know that Prim is starting to get a little more conservative. <clears throat> so I asked John Borak um, and Jim Lomenzo um, to um, run some numbers for us at 7.4% so that the increase in liability and increase in cost is not quite so much. And they agreed to do that. So um, the figures that you see in the first column under January 1 of 20 at $14,000 um, will not be um, quite that um, draconian. So if you look at the bottom, we're at an unfunded liability of about $67 million on a market basis and 73 million on an actuarial basis. And that'll go down probably on the actuarial basis, probably around 66 in a market will probably be at around 60. So um, we'll get a new set of numbers uh, that won't be quite as ugly. Uh, I also asked them to do um, a funding schedule showing 8% increase per year so if you go to alternative 3A in the upper right corner, you'll see various alternatives. 
So if you turn to the 3A, what I asked them to do is give us this 8% uh, schedule. So the total cost column, um, and this includes the housing authority, so it's not just the town. You'll see for 21, we're at 6.8 million, and then it goes to 7.358 million and so forth. So I think where we're headed is a funding schedule that's gonna follow that column exactly the same all the way down to 20, 36 and in 2036 it won't be 19 million it's going to be something substantially less than that probably probably around five or six million dollars um, when they come back with the new numbers but because it's an eight percent increase in schedule um, that total column total cost column will be um, exactly the same as what you see right now so we should get something um, from PARAC you know in the coming uh, days and weeks um, that reflects a 7.4 percent investment return and this 3A schedule with uh, a modification at the very end. Um, these valuations, you know, for Joe and Dennis's uh, benefit are done every other year. We've used PARAC uh, because they're free, um, but you get what you pay for sometimes. Anyway, um, we just have, well, We'll have this item on the agenda for October. Uh, we can vote at that point um, on the final numbers and uh, let PARAC know that we're, that we're good with uh, everything else and they'll issue a report. So uh, that's where we stand. Um, the only other thing I might throw in here is um, all of us actuaries are watching COVID-19 very carefully and its effect on mortality. And the mortality assumptions, for example, um, PARAC uses a generational mortality improvement scale that says for every year into the future, forever, the mortality is going to get better. People are going to live longer. Well, as everybody knows, in the last six months, that ain't happening. So um, it's going to be interesting to see where we go. But right now, we just don't have enough data, enough information to make any intelligent decisions on going forward on mortality assumptions. Um, someday we will, um, but um, not now and, and not for this valuation. So with that, if, if uh, anybody has any questions on these numbers, um, let me know. Dan, one, one quick question. Uh, you know how you did the 8% increasing and it only changes at, in 2036? Yeah. The, well, the, well, well, the other thing they'll change is, is 2038 and 39 because the normal costs will be a little bit lower, but, but that's, that's infinitesimal. Right. But if, if, is there any way to smooth that throughout the schedule instead of taking it all at, at the end that there's more, more of a uh, less expended um, in the like next year? You know how next year's that number is going to stay the same at eight percent. It's going to go up eight percent, increasing every year. So instead of going up eight percent, it will go up seven something. Oh yeah, I mean, um, if you look at like uh, the previous alternative three, he's got eight sixty six, and then it goes up. But you could have those modifications in the increase in that last column be a variable. So. For example, you could do 866 for a few years and then switch to eight. Um, that can be done. Um, but also remember that every two years, and, and we could do this, we could say, hey, we want evaluation next year. We could do it every year and then adjust as well. So the out years really don't mean too much. Um, you know, if you say, well, let's do 8% for a few years and then a different schedule after that, that really doesn't do anything. It, it won't change um, in the long term, it won't change anything. It won't change anything as far as the rating agencies are concerned. If we go out for a bond, they're still gonna see a 2035 or 2036 end date. Um, it really doesn't do much. I mean, you can ask them for it, Kevin, if you wanna you know, put in the request, but in the long run, it really doesn't matter. Well, in the long run, no, but in the short term, so, say you did the next two years at at five percent. 
Ah, okay. Well, that's do, do, do you know what I mean? That, that's that's much different. Now, yeah. what you're talking about is something. Um, if you say we give us a couple years at five, and then we'll make it a 2037 schedule because we'll be right. we'll have to pad it at the end. Um, oh yeah, I mean that's that's a possibility. Um, I would just have a conversation. You know, which, which which you can do is just call up. You know, John Bohr, I can say, hey, I'm looking at this. Would you be willing to allow us to have a schedule that goes up 5% for a couple of years and then, and then starts to balloon and, yeah. uh, and, and see what he says? What, what, would, what would he say, Dan? My guess is he would ag agree to it because they realize that cities and towns are struggling and, and the state's on a 112th budget. So they're going to be, they've to told us in the spring that they are going to be accommodating and flexible in terms of uh, funding schedules. So my guess is that he, he would give you a yes. Really? That's my guess. Well, it depends what you ask for. If you ask for a 1% for a couple of years, he'll say no. If you say, give me 5% for a couple of years and then balloon it, uh, he might say yes. So, so what, what, he, what, what are, what's the board's thought on something like that? Instead of doing a, a straight eight uh, percent for the next couple of years, going something less than eight. Well, I mean, Kevin, you can look at alternative one, and that's seven point one eight. They gave us that one. I'll have to look at that number again, uh, but but he's going to send us new numbers with regards to your request. Yeah, I requested um, 7.4 and 8% increasing. If you want to look at something other than, as well as 8% increasing, um, we should get that request in now. Now, would, would he, on, on the schedules that he sent us, or they, they sent us, are they going to redo them all or just all of them at 7.4? No, I mean, my, my request was 3A. Just 3A, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. if yeah, so if you want more than just three A, then um, you know contact John and say talk to him and say you know this is what I'm thinking about, and get his feel for it, and the two of you can agree to what they're going to put together. Okay. All right. Um, Sherry, you have anything on this? Um, just a couple of questions. Uh, we're at seven and a half right now. Yes. And and staying at seven and a half why, why can't we oh we can put in the request to stay at seven and a half um and i've got some clients that are 7.8 right now and parak has approved them so yeah we could stay at uh seven and a half uh, or at least put in the request to stay there because uh, that's what we did two years ago they wanted us down to 7.3 or 7.4 and I said, can we just stay at seven and a half? And they, and they agreed. Um, so yeah, we can, but again, uh, it doesn't really matter if we have a schedule that just goes up a fixed percent uh, every single year. The only thing that matters is that our funded ratio would be a little bit higher than the, what is it now? Six, 63.7 might go up to 64. Um, not sure, you know, yeah, maybe 65. There's somewhere in that neighborhood, 64, 65. So that's the only material change would be our funded ratio would appear to be a little bit higher than it does right now. Okay. <clears throat> and as Dan said, um, PARAC is um, very conservative. Um, yes. Any thoughts about um, looking for our own actuary well, i've raised this a few times i mean i'm well, all for that well I, I think we have discussed that before mm -hmm. uh, uh unfortunately we can't use uh sherman actuaries um <laughs> no. and that's not to say you know i i have discussed it with um um danny rhodes at, at siegel who does our opep valuation mm -hmm. and you know, unfortunately, a lot of them, a lot of the um, actuaries that do these valuations, they fall in line with what Perec 
um, is using as their yeah, I, yeah, that would be. Do you know what I mean? That would be, yeah, that and, would be crazy then. Yeah. So if you I, put I, out, yeah, I, I, I've you, never, been, I've never been a lemming, so I'm always fighting Perak. Yeah, I mean, I'm good with. I am good with um, Sherman Actuary. I, I, I am. It's, it's, it's absolutely Dan's decision whether. I mean, I think he would be more valuable as an actuary for us. So, I, I do. You know, I think he's yeah. really good at what he does. But, yeah, but you got to have to. You have to remember that um, I can't uh, for not only just because I'm on the board, but I'm also on finance committee. I had a discussion with Powers and Sullivan. And they said I couldn't do the OPEB or the pension because there'd be a conflict of interest. All right. Yeah. So in order for you to be our actuary, you would have to a resign your position on the retirement board and also on the finance committee. Correct. You want to go there? No. Nope. <laughs> do you? Nope. Nope. I th I think as a retirement board, I think he's more valuable as a as an actuary to us. But then we lose him on on the on the finance committee end of it. Yeah, oh, but dear. again, as 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 I said, um, we're still going to be putting in um, you know a five, six, seven percent increase every year for a number of years, um, even if you have less conservative assumptions. I, I don't think those numbers are going to change. So it, the only thing that will change is that you, your end date would be a little shorter. I'd probably come up with a schedule and say we're done 2035, 2034, something like that. Because um, one of the things that Parak has not done is done a study of the other assumptions. For example, salary increases, um, turnover, retirement rates. Uh, there's a lot of other assumptions that they haven't studied in, in over 20 years. I have. I, I studied. I did a big study in 2015. So, Dan, whatever whatever numbers you were looking at and proposing, the 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 final end, I guess, would be like the, the town. The town would have to come up with more money. Oh yeah, absolutely. And and as Kevin said, is it five percent more, six percent, seven percent, eight percent more? I mean that that's. And that's just a, a, a piece to go into the PARAC and saying, would you be willing to give us a schedule that only went up 5%, let's say, for two years, and then went to like eight and a half for the remaining period or whatever it takes to get to the end. So if, but if we were to keep it as it is now, like, does mean, the time, we keep what as it is? If we keep it at seven and a half? Oh, yeah, I'm saying if we're seven and a half or 7.4, the next two years appropriations are going to be exactly the same. Okay. The only thing different is the funded ratio would be a little bit higher. And at, in 2036, the number would be a little bit lower. But, you know, for the next two years, it's a matter of do we have 5% increase for a couple of years right. or do we have six or do we have eight? That's and our, our funding schedule goes to 2036 right now? Um, 35, I think. No, 35. I think it's 36. Yeah. Kathy, 36? Kathy, 36, 35? I think it's 36. 36? Yeah, it's 36. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, well, Dan, um, sorry, Kevin. No. Uh, what do, I, I don't want to say most or um, the majority of retirement boards, but do, do they use PARAC or, or are they or they do they have their own actuary? Most have their own. Um, really? Yeah, most have their own. And who uh, do they use? Well, as Kevin said, uh, Siegel is one. Um, Larry Stone is another. And we had Larry for a short yeah. period of time. I know we did. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> and Linda Bornival, um, who I worked with for a number of years when she was at Buck and I was at Buck, oh, okay. um, or Mellon, Mellon Buck. Yeah. Uh, she's in New Hampshire. She does several systems. And um, let's see who else is out there. Oh, I'm, I think uh, Buck may still have a couple. Um, when I left Buck, I, they, um, it was Larry Driscoll did uh, a number of them, or David Driscoll. Larry Driscoll's a different guy. Um, I think they may still be doing some. But what you can do is if, if you look on the Parac website, yeah. Um, all the actuaries 
are listed. So if you look at a system, like you look at Wakefield uh, in the annual report up in the right hand corner, it'll say who the actuary is and it'll say PARAC. So yes. you can actually take yeah. one of the books and just page through it quickly and you can see who's all doing this. And there's some, there's an actuary out of, of Connecticut, I think that's doing a couple out west. The Western um, systems have some people out of Connecticut, I think it might be uh, um, a couple of systems out there use somebody other than, you know, Stone, Sherman, Bornival, Siegel. Right. And like you said, you, you get what you pay for. And I, I think maybe we should really look at going a different route other than PARAC. Putting out an RFP? I think so. And, you know, you have to be careful going the RFP route because once you accept someone, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you can, you know, one of the questions that you can ask them is, um, what, what's your investment rate of return? What are you using? Is it higher than what Perec is going to use? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Is, is that a question that you can ask in? Oh, sure. Absolutely. I, yeah, I would think so. Yeah. That we want you to use 11%. Oh, no, no, no. Because the other thing you have to do is, it, is the actuary's report have to be acceptable to PARAC. Right. And if you said, they, if they use 11%, John Boric has said, this is not acceptable and, and throw it in, in the trash. Right. It has, yeah, because PARAC still has oversight on the assumptions to make sure that they're not unreasonable. Right. Okay. But I mean, the, and again, the investment return is just one of the assumptions. The other thing you can ask the actuary is in terms of, do you just use PARAC assumptions for say, salary increases, turnover, retirement rates, disability right. rates, or do you have something else that you prefer? Or would you be willing to use Sherman's study from 2015? Mm -hmm. Okay. How often do you do your studies, Dan? Well, um, I kept bugging Jim Lomenzo in 2010, 2011, 2012. Mm -hmm. The Jim, when are you going to do your study? Uh, when yeah. they did pension reform back in, I don't know, 20, 2009, it actually called for PARAC to do an actuarial experience study for everybody. Well, they did it for the teachers, they did it for the state, but they didn't do it for the municipal. And he kept dragging his feet. And finally in 2015, I said, this is nuts. So I sent the letter to all my clients and say, I'd like to do this study. I'd like to you know, share the cost of the study amongst all of you. Um, and I got um, 13 systems to say yes. And, yeah. because, and because three of the systems were counties, I got a lot of people. I had to get, you have to have a large population to make the results meaningful. So I got Plymouth, Norfolk, and Bristol County all to say yes. And now I had like 45,000 participants over a five-year period. So I made it credible. Is, is five years a long time? Should it not, like, how often would you do another one? In many states require a ex five-year experience study every five years. That's the norm at the state level. So we should be thinking about pushing for another one? Well, Wakefield by itself is too small. It's not worth right. it. Right. So you would but, have to go and... So, yeah. So you, what you really want to do is get lots of systems together. Um, mm -hmm. and, and like, you know, all the counties mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, so, but I mean, Parax is still using their study from 2000. So... Yeah, that's like, why? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I, I have to jump in. I'm, I'm leaving the meeting. Uh, Dan, you're taking over. Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone, and uh, stay safe. Bye, Kevin. Bye. Bye, Kevin. All right. So anything else on um, item nine? Again, so, we'll get... Yeah, so Dan, um, this is going to come back at, at, it'll be on our next, our October yeah. one. Yes, we have to, yeah, we have to vote for a new funding schedule. And you'll have, um, you'll be proposing something a little different than what we have in front of us? Yes, it will be different than what we have in front of us. Okay, all right. Very good.
All right. Um, Joe, anything else on the uh, evaluation? Joe? Joe? Oh, he just What's muted. Like, nope, I know. Joe? Okay, while he's messing with his phone, Dennis, are you okay with the uh, evaluation? I'm all set. Okay. Joe, Joe? give me another shot. I know, Joe. Well, let's assume it that doesn't, he, he looks like he's like muting and unmuting himself. Yeah. Well, we could if when Joe figures out the phone and if he's got something on item nine, we, we'll we'll go back to it. That not a problem. Okay. Item ten. I'm back. I, oh, have the schedule. <laughs> I, I don't. My phone must time out and go to mute after a few. After yeah, a certain I don't amount know. of time, because it's yeah. on unmute now, but then it'll it must go to mute. So I apologize. I don't know what the yeah. hell is going on. No worries. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Bye. So yeah, so so Joe, so you know, every every you know, forty seconds, just say hi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. I'll just cough or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, item ten: um, intent to retire. We have some retirements in front of us. And I got to scroll down to that. First one up, uh, Susan Doucette. Um, Kathy, anything unusual here? No. Okay, can I get a motion? Yep, I motion. Um, I motion. Okay, Take motion to accept, okay. Yeah, motion to uh, accept, thank you. There you go. Uh, can I get a second? Second. second. Thank you. Um, I'm going to do things a little different than Kevin. I'm just going to say, does anybody have any discussion on Susan? Negative. Hearing none. Um, all those in favor? Um, Joe? Aye. Sherry? Aye. Dennis? Aye. And I'm an aye. Cynthia Conway. Anything unusual for Cynthia, Kathy? Nothing unusual. Okay. Um, any discussion? Oh, well, I'm sorry. First, the motion. Uh, motion to accept, Sherry. I get second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, Joe. Aye. Sherry. Aye. Dennis. Aye. And I'm an aye. Uh, next up, Constant Ryan. Kathy, anything unusual here? Nothing unusual. Okay. Motion, motion to accept. Yes, Thank Sherry. You. Yep. You got a second? Second. All right. Um, any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, Joe. Aye. Sherry. Aye. Dennis. Aye. I'm an aye. Next item, new members. Dana Harris. Kathy, anything odd here? No. Okay. Can I get a motion? A motion to accept Dana. Get a second. Second. Hi. Any discussion? Hearing none. Oh yeah, I'm Is sorry. It? Yes. Um, just go, Kathy, where where exactly is he? I'm trying to look. He, if I remember correctly, is. I know. I'm sorry. I'm looking. No, that's all right. I think he's in building. He's in town yeah. hall building. Yeah, he's DPW. I know no, he's DPW. I just didn't know yeah. where. Um, I'm sorry. So he's, I thought so he's, he meant what division of DPW. Yeah, no. So he's Chris Pierce? I think he's Chris Pierce, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Even though that says yep. Steve Fitzpatrick, I think I got a new letter changing it to Chris Pierce. Okay. Um, wrong, though. Why who did was I he? The wrong one, then. Well, yeah, this says Stephen Fitzpatrick. 
I know. Yeah, but That's I, I'm I, looking. I, yeah, it says, but uh, HR gave me a new letter just changing the supervisor to Chris. Am I right, uh, Chris? Yes. Is this is this a new job or is this a um, a? I don't know that one. Maybe or, this has more. Uh, I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a new one. I think it was uh, Chris lost. Um, I think he, somebody had quit and then somebody moved up and then there was some movement over there. I don't believe this is a new one. I can't, I, I just think of any movement and I mean, cause we see these, we see these people all the time in town hall, you know, mm -hmm. since they're stationed in town hall. Um, yeah, there's, uh, there was a, there's actually a big kid. He actually looks like Dana Brickett. He was, he was actually doing some work down at the, uh, at North Ave and he was the, he was new. I think that's this kid. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is it a new position or is it, I, I don't think there was I, turnover. Uh, I don't know. I know that kid Sonia had left, which would open up into a door. It was a kid doing the roofing work. He didn't stay very long. <laughs> okay. Um, any other discussion on Dana? Okay, hearing none. Um, all those in favor, Joe. Uh, yes. Uh, Sherry. Yes. Dennis. Aye. And I'm yes. an aye. All right, so the library, getting a new person. Annie. Um, anything odd here, Kathy? No, Annie was part time. They've just moved to full time employment. Okay, very good. Um, I need a motion. Motion to accept Annie, Sherry. Second. Second. Uh, discussion. Hearing none. Um, all in favor, Joe. Yes. Sherry. Yes. Dennis. Yes. And I am an I. Next up, the schools are bringing in Larissa. Anything there, Kathy, odd or unusual? Um, she is an instructional support person, so she's a paraprofessional. Unfortunately, she was hired September 1st. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, so she's gonna. She, I guess she's one that we're gonna have to allow in since she was September first. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Okay. Um, any other? Well, I, I guess um, a motion. I need. Uh, motion to accept uh, Larissa Sherry. A second. <laughs> second. All right. Um, any other discussion? Hearing none, um, all those in favor, Joe. Aye. Sherry. Aye. Dennis. Aye. And I'm an aye. All right, so next up, refunds. Um, do, we, do we vote on refunds too? Yes, yes. we do. Yeah. Okay. All right, so the first one is uh, Lisa. Um, a refund of fifty-seven twenty-five. Do I get a motion? Yes, uh, motion to um, approve the refund for Lisa. A second. Second. Um, any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Uh, Joe. Aye. Sherry. Aye. Dennis. Aye. I'm an aye. Next refund, Jacqueline. Do I get a motion? Yep, motion to approve the refund for Jacqueline. Sorry. Uh, second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, Joe. Aye. Sherry. Aye. Dennis. Aye. And I'm an aye. Next up, warrants. 
Or do we do individual votes on warrants as well? Yes, we do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, staff payroll. Um, you know, motion. Yep. I uh, motion to approve the August staff payroll. Can I get a second? Second. All right. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Joe? Aye. Sherry? Aye. Dennis? Aye. And I'm an aye. Uh, non contrib payroll. Can I get a motion? Motion to approve the non uh, contrib payroll for August. A second? Second. All right. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Joe? Aye. Sherry? Aye. Dennis? Aye. And I am an I. Uh, 13C, the contrib payroll for August. Can I get a motion? Motion to approve the August contrib payroll. A second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Joe? Aye. Sherry? Aye. Dennis. Aye. And I'm an aye. Um, 13D uh, counts payable warrant for $428.78. Can I get a motion? I motion to approve the AP warrant. Uh, second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, Joe. Aye. Sherry. Aye. Dennis. Aye. And I am an aye. Correspondence. We have a number of items and any discussion on that, I'll go around the group. Uh, Joe, anything on correspondence you'd like to bring up? Uh, no, sir. Sherry? No, I'm all set. Uh, Dennis? All good. And I am good, so I need a motion. I motion to um, approve and put the correspondence on file. Second. Yes, thank you. Um, all those in favor? Uh, Joe? Aye. Sherry. Aye. Dennis. Aye. And I am an aye. Um, item 15, announcements and acknowledgements. Um, go around the group. Uh, Joe, anything? Um, no, sir. Sherry? Negative, I'm all set. Okay, uh, Dennis? I'm all set. I am all set. Kathy, you got anything to yes, talk to us I about? Yes, I do. Um, okay. I just want to let it be known that the town council set the town meeting for Saturday, November 7th. Um, if anybody has any articles they want to put on, we need to get it before our next board meeting. We need to get it to Sherry by October 8th. And the only thing I could think of off the top of my head would be a warrant to increase the COLA base. I mean, that, that, that would be the only thing we would be proposing or could propose, right? I didn't catch that. I didn't catch that either. Me neither. Oh, what, what's, oh, no, you. I didn't catch what you said, oh, Kathy. Me? Yeah. I didn't say Sorry, that. that was Joe. Oh, uh, okay. Joe's back. All right. So something in your background, Joe. Okay. Okay. We're good. There. Oh yeah. That, I, I threw it on me. I'm at the fire's house. So I threw it on me because there was an announcement on the speaker. I didn't, you guys don't need to hear that stuff. So I threw it on me real quick. Mute, oh, okay. Crap. All right. Great. Thank you. All right. Um, anything else, Kathy, on announcements? Nothing else. Okay. Um, item 16, any matters not anticipated? 
Anything else anybody wants to bring up? Do we have anything? I don't think well, we that would be an emergency situation that needs a vote. Right. So we don't have yeah. anything, right? No. Nothing. All right. Very good. Um, let's see. Next board meeting is October 15th at 8 a.m. Everybody mark the calendars appropriately. And then item 18 is an adjournment. So um, do I have a motion to adjourn? I motion to adjourn. Second. There's a second. All those in favor, Joe. Aye. Sherry. Yes. Dennis. Aye. And I am an I. So with that, um, the meeting is adjourned. I hope everybody has a great day and stay safe. And uh, great. 